there are times when we are pressed on every side. The Apostle Paul said, I am pressed on every side. You know, but that was good in a sense that we are to press into the kingdom of God. We are to press our way into the kingdom. And it says that in Luke 16, verse 16, the law and the prophets were until John. Since that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man or every person presses into it. You know, when I think about that word pressed, I think about the woman in chapter 5 of Mark who pressed her way into the presence of Jesus himself, the healer. And as she pressed her way, you know, there were uh, obstacles around her. There were, she wasn't even supposed to be out in public. And, and they, they could have certainly taken her and stoned her to death. But she pressed her way. She had to make an effort in order to receive that healing. And some of you listening today and viewing today, there are things that you're believing God for, that you're believing uh, the Lord for your ministry, that you're believing the Lord for your family, your marriage, your finances, your healing in your body. We must press into it. We also must press in to our destiny and into our purpose. Because we have an enemy out there that desires to get us off track, to distract us, to cause deception to come, and many other obstacles so that we do not finish our course and we do not enter into that the kingdom of God. You know, it says that the kingdom is within us. And so what we're doing is here on the outside, we're working our way back to the inside. If you can, you know, visualize that, that we are, um, this is just a carnal suit that I'm wearing, a, an earthly suit, and but the real me is on the inside. And so we're working back uh, into uh, who we really are in Christ Jesus and the Word of God will help us to do that. The Word tells us who we are in Christ Jesus. I thank you for viewing today. My name is Sherry White, and I'm coming to you from Fountain of Life Ministries International here in Athens, Georgia. It's such a pleasure uh, to speak the Word of God and to bring the uh, Word of God forth. And I thank you for viewing. I thank you for your prayers and your support. You know, turn over with me to Philippians 3.14 if you have your swords with you. It's always good to have your sword by your side just in case um, you need to um, be encouraged and, and, and receive hope in your life. Um, Philippians 3 verse 14 says that, well, let's go back to 13. I always like to put it in, in perspective. Uh, in fact, let's go all the way back to verse 12. Not as though I had already attained, and this is the Apostle Paul speaking. He says, Neither were already perfect, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. He wanted to finish his course. He wanted to um, fulfill that purpose and destiny that he had been called to. And then in verse 13, Brethren, I count, it, I, I count not myself to have apprehended. He said, I'm not there yet. And none of us are there yet. But what this message is all about today is, is making a, a, an effort uh, to press in to the things of God, to press in to what he has for us, the promises, his kingdom, but this one thing I do, this one thing I do, this is what Apostle Paul said, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those which are before. You know, until we let go of the things that were that are behind us, 
We can never reach forward to the things God has for us. You know, I heard I heard this a long time ago. I don't know where it originated, but it says, "Do not let your yesterdays take up your tomorrows. Take all the tomorrows that you have. You know, our future. God has a plan for each one of us, and our future is is a good one." He says in Jeremiah 29, 11, I know uh, the end result. I know my plan for you. It is good, saith the Lord. And, and so if we do not forget those things which are behind, forget the things that you did when you were out there in the world, and even yesterday, maybe you said something, maybe you did something. You know, that's why it's good to repent. Uh, every day and just say, Lord, forgive me of anything I've said or done that has not been of, of faith because it's sin, and I ask you to forgive me. And then just receive that forgiveness from the Lord. But he says, I forget those things so that I can go forward into the things that God has for me. You know, I want to do that. In verse 14, it says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. And what is that? That is to fulfill destiny. That is to fulfill purpose in, in our lives. You know, but I, like I said, we have an enemy, and the enemy uh, does not want us to, to fulfill purpose. And we have actually three enemies. We have our own flesh, which is an enemy. We have Satan himself, which is an enemy. And we have the world out there, uh, which is an enemy as well. But praise God, we have three conquerors. We have three conquerors. For God so loved the world that he sent Jesus. And so the Father himself took care of the world for us. Hallelujah. The world does not have to come in and affect us or influence us in any way from receiving all that God has for us and pressing into the kingdom. Jesus took care of Satan. He bruised his head. He crushed him. It says that we overcome by the blood of the Lamb, and that was that's the blood of Jesus, the word of our testimony. This is what it says in Revelation. And we love not our life unto the death. You know, I thank the Lord for... Jesus Christ, who made us more than conquerors. You know, and it says here that we press toward that mark. It says in verse 15, Let us therefore as many as be perfect be thus minded. Be, let this mind be in us that was in Christ Jesus or is in Christ Jesus right now. And if anything be otherwise minded, God shall reveal it this even unto you. So we must have the mind of Christ. And the way we get that is by studying the Word of God so that we become workmen that we don't have to be ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. You know, I want to cover with you today just a few hindrances, uh, four to be uh, precise, uh, that the Holy Spirit put in my heart uh, to share with you today that could cause you not to press in uh, to the kingdom of God, that keeps a person from uh, attaining uh, and fulfilling their purpose and their destiny. And number one is unforgiveness. And, and I'm going to turn over to Matthew uh, chapter 6. Unforgiveness in your heart will keep you from reaching and pressing in to the kingdom of God. In chapter 6, verses 14 and 15. For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if you forgive not men their trespasses, or any person that trespasses against you, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. These are Jesus' words. These are red in my Bible. Uh, and I'm kind of talking about the color. And when I, I love to read uh, 
those statements that Jesus makes because they're powerful in our lives. And so we must get rid of that unforgiveness, and we do that by faith. Let's turn over to Matthew 18, 21. And this says, Then came Peter to him, to Jesus, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Till seven times? Do I do it seven times? And this is what Jesus, this is his response. I say not unto thee seven times, but seventy times seven, which is 490, which also is we forgive continually those things that are said against us, that those actions that that hurt us and wound us, it says that we just continue to forgive. And as we do that, it, it cleanses our heart of, of just receiving God's forgiveness, and that cleanses us, and forgiving others, that cleanses our heart, and that keeps us on that road to press in to the things of God and to enter His kingdom. And let's turn over to one more scripture here on this one, Mark chapter 11. One of my favorite passages. It says in verse 25, And when you stand praying, forgive. If you have ought against any, that your Father also, which is in heaven, may forgive you your trespasses. In verse 26, but if you do not forgive, neither will your Father, which is in heaven, forgive your trespasses. And so this is so important when we're praying, when we're believing God uh, to turn around our marriage, to restore our finances, to bring our children and our grandchildren into the kingdom of God, when we're uh, asking God to open up doors for ministry, uh, that we... When we stay in praying, we forgive. And so that will help us to press in to the kingdom of God. Now this next one is a big one. And this is, this is a hindrance that can cause an individual not to press in. And it's the little word lust. L-U-S-T. And I'm right here in Mark. Let's go to Mark chapter 4, verse 19. And the cares of this world. Now this is the sower. This is the chapter about the sower goes forth to sow the seed or the word of God. And it says here in verse 19, there can be hindrances for the word of God taking effect in our lives and for us pressing into the kingdom. And the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things entering in choke the word, and it becometh unfruitful. You know, God wants us to be fruitful. In John chapter 15 says, he, you are ordained, you are ordained to bring forth much fruit. And this is the time that God is coming, and he's putting in the sickle, and he wants to see your fruit. Okay, so that's, that's good. That's very good. But those that are in a lustful situation, and they um, they lust after the riches. They they desire the things of the world. Uh, they live unholy lives, all unclean lives. All of this will keep an individual from pressing in. Let's go to Romans chapter six. There's a lot in Romans uh, that we need to know. Romans chapter 6, verse 12. Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body that you should obey it in the lust thereof. You know, your body wants certain things. You know, sometimes my body wants this over here that I'm not supposed to eat. Or my, you know, some people may, um, they, they have lust of their flesh that... Um, keep them uh, in bondage, that keep them in a state of, of not 
producing the fruit that God wants them to produce. Hindrance number three is bitterness. It says that we do not want a root of bitterness to grow up in us. Ephesians 4.31. It's, and let's just turn right there and put our eyes on it. Ephesians 4.31. That we are, it says, let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. Don't let a root grow up in you. That In Hebrews chapter 12, 15. Looking diligently lest any man fail of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness spring up and trouble you. See, if there is bitterness in your heart, then it will it will hinder you receiving everything that God has for you. It will hinder your prayers. It will hinder uh, the the fruitfulness in your life. And the last one that I want to cover today as far as a hindrance, is strife. It says that we are to, to not entertain strife. We're not to get into strife. In Romans 13, 13, it says that we are to let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wantonness, not in strife and envy. Put it away. Avoid it at all cost. Yeah, but I know that I'm right. And so I'm going to, uh, you know, defend myself. I'm going to fight this battle. No. It says to avoid strife. Because strife is entangling. It is like a web that a spider weaves. And a, I know, I've, I've walked by a spider web and saw a little fly that's got itself caught in that spider web. And that's what strife does. It just it, it entangles and brings that individual into a, a web of deception. Well, we're right there, turn to... 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. For you are for you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? You know, in the in the church at Corinth, they had the gifts, they had the you know, those those things that but Paul kept saying, you know, there's something that's hindering you. You know, do away with this strife because it's carnality. Strife is carnality. And we are to be walking in the Spirit. And that way we can fulfill our destiny and we can fulfill our purpose. In James 3.16, and I'm bringing this to some kind of conclusion here, God wants us to, to receive everything that's in the kingdom of God. For where there is envying and strife, there is confusion and every evil work. That's a hindrance. That will keep us from entering in and pressing in to the kingdom of God. So the four that I covered were unforgiveness, lust, bitterness, and strife. Those things we need to avoid. What things do we need to do? We need to follow after the Holy Spirit wherever He leads us. We need to listen to the voice of the Father. We need to study the Word of God so that we know who we are in Christ Jesus. God bless you today. I pray for you today right now in the name of Jesus that you will begin to lay down those things that hinder you, that you might press into the kingdom of God and receive healing in your body to receive all of those promises that God has, has promised you, the abundance 
that God has promised you. I pray for you today that you will press in to the kingdom of God. God bless you.